Hello, thank you for returning to my channel. The topic of this video is limiting reagent. Before I explain this to you, let me tell you yesterday's story. Last night, I had some, uh, my son come home from college and he got with him two friends. And it was 12 o'clock at night and they were preparing for an exam that they had today. So uh, they told me that they were hungry and they asked me if I could fix them some chicken burgers. Well, I went into the kitchen, looked into the refrigerator and I took out the ingredients which were buns, uh, some chicken patties and cheese slices. So, and I put them over the counter and I allowed the ingredients to talk to me. So, on this side were the buns, in the middle were the chicken patties and the cheese slices. So, I thought, let me just see how many uh, burgers can I produce. And when I did this, while I was doing this, it occurred to me that I had thought of doing limiting regions this morning with you. And this was the perfect example to explain a limiting reagent. Just see, I had four buns, I had three chicken patties, and I had five slices of cheese, the blue slices of cheese, three chicken patties, and four buns. How many burgers do you think could I make with these? What was the maximum number of burgers that I could have made? For every bun, what I need is uh, for every burger, I need one bun, I need one chicken patty, and I need one cheese slice. So, when I started making it, I took a bun, I took a chicken patty, and one cheese slice, and according to it, I had prepared one burger. So with the second one, one, two, one, I made the second burger. With the third, one, two, and the third one, I made the third burger. So, one, 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 one burger, these three go on, one, 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 these three gone, one, 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 these three gone. Now, can I make more burgers? I could make only three burgers. Why? Because I had three chicken patties and I ran out of the chicken patties. If I ran out of the chicken patties, I couldn't make any more burgers. That, if we assume this to be a chemical reaction, and we assume that the bun, chicken patty and cheese were the reactants and the burger was the product that would be formed. For every one burger to be formed, I would require one bun, one chicken patty and one cheese slice. Since I had only three chicken patties, it, this was the ingredient that ran out first. Since it ran out, I would call this the limiting reagent or the limiting reactant. So this is the concept of limit in a chemical reaction. That reactant which runs out the first is known as the limiting reagent. Now let us take another uh, assumption. Let us assume that the kids told me, okay, we don't want one cheese slice, we want two cheese slices in our burgers. So I said, okay, let's change the recipe. For every burger to be formed, I now need one bun, one chicken patty and two cheese slices, right? If I use two cheese slices, I start making my, uh, my burgers again. Let me use a blue color now. So this time, I use one bun, one chicken patty, and I use two cheese slices. For the second burger, I use one bun, one chicken patty, and two cheese slices. But when I come to the third burger, I have one bun, I have one chicken patty, but I have only one cheese slice. So although I had five cheese slices, which were the maximum in number, yet it was the cheese slices which ran out first. And therefore, in the second case, it was the cheese slices which were the limiting reagent. So remember when you're trying to find out the limiting reagent in a chemical reaction, it is not the one with the least amount which is the limiting reagent, but the one that runs out in the reaction first like the cheese slices, although they were largest in number, it was the cheese slices that ran out and therefore that became the limiting reagent. So the limiting reagent is that reactant which runs out first in a chemical reaction and therefore 
it is the one that causes the end that seizes the reaction although you may have the other reactants the reaction does not take place further because of that one limiting reagent now all other reagents after the use up of the limiting reagent you will always have in the first case we made three burgers we were left with two chicken slice uh, sorry cheese slices so they were that was the excess reactant the one that is left unused, the reactant that is left unused is known as the excess reactant. After the limiting reagent stops the reaction, whatever excess reactant is left over would not participate in chemical reaction. There's another one example. Before we come to solving problems of actual reactions, I would like to explain this to you. There are two reactants in, in this chemical reaction. A combines with a molecule of B, that is B2, to form a compound AB2. You have to identify the limiting reactant if, what are the conditions? 300 atoms of A combine with 200 molecules of B. We know one atom of A combines with one molecule of B to form one molecule of AB2. Keeping that in mind, if you have 300 atoms of A and they, you would need 300 molecules of B because the ratio is 1 is to 1. It means what is less here? 200 molecules of B. Therefore, the limiting reactant here is B. In the second situation, you have two moles of A. Remember, an equation, a balanced chemical equation tells is a molar equation. It's a molecular equation too. So, if we could talk in terms of moles. If you have two moles of A, which react with three moles of B2, if you have two moles of A, you only need two moles of B2. It means if you have three moles of B2, we will, B2 would be the excess reactant and A would be the limiting reagent. If you have 100 atoms of A and you have 100 molecules of B2, we know for one atom of A, you need one molecule of B2. They should be the equal number of atom and molecules. So if you have 100 atom and 100 is the same number, therefore this equation is balanced and there would be no limiting reagent here. You have 5 moles of A, but you have only 2.5 moles of B2. Obviously, since the ratio is 1 is to 1, B2 will is half of what is required. If you have 5 moles of A, you need 5 moles of B2 logically and therefore it is B2 which would run out first and would be the limiting reagent. Another one, you have 2.5 moles of A and you have 5 moles of B2. We need only 2.5 moles. We do not need 5 moles of B2. Therefore, the limiting reagent here would be 2.5 moles of A. So, I hope the concept is clear to you of limiting reagents. In the next video, I would like to solve, we we'll do practice problems of limiting reagents. Thank you for watching. Keep returning. Bye-bye.